Sunday, April 21st, 2024, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today we're going to look at the relationship between wars and inflation. And we're going to look back at history because even though history doesn't repeat perfectly, it rhymes. So the main reason why both wars and um, inflation are connected is that uh, during wars, the state is focused on survival or defending itself and the normal domestic economy just uh, is not the priority. All the resources, labor, uh, it, they're all geared towards fighting the war, winning the war, uh, sound money uh, or convertibility into gold and silver is suspended. And that, that normally leads to rising prices, of course. And the other thing that gets disrupted are supply chains, something we've learned quite a bit about in, in the last four years or so. So let's quickly go through some historical examples. The, the best example, uh, I would say, going back into antiquity is the Roman Empire. They overextended, of course, and by the end of the third century, the denarius had no more silver left in it. So that's the first big example of inflation. Of course, it was different back then. They didn't use uh, paper money. Uh, let's skip forward to the late 18th century because there are some good examples there. There's France, of course. Uh, the French Empire extended itself with the, through the French and Indian War. And by the 1790s, it had the revolution. And they tried a different currency, a paper currency, the Asinats, that hyperinflated. And again, the general public suffered. Same thing happened uh, in the North American colonies, Britain's colonies, and the Revolutionary War. And uh, the continental dollar, that hyperinflated as well, out of thin air. And uh, people holding that currency uh, got left holding the bag. And we can skip over, uh, skip on to uh, the Civil War, Confederate dollars, the greenbacks. We can go to World War I, the inflation that we had even in the UK. It wasn't as bad as the hyperinflation in Germany eventually in 1923. Uh, we can look at post-World War II. The German mark again collapsed post-World War II. We even had inflation here in the UK. Even though the UK won World War II, uh, we had a, a slow growth economy for the next 25 years. And by the 1970s, uh, the country almost went bankrupt. And then you have the case of the United States in the 1960s and 70s, uh, fighting the Vietnam War. That led to the collapse of the Bretton Woods system. That led to uh, delinking uh, the U.S. dollar from gold in 1971. But eventually things stabilized and... Uh, since 1991 up until, I would say, 2020, 2022, the world had been relatively peaceful. Supply chains uh, were running perfectly from uh, San Francisco to Shanghai and from Cape Town to uh, Rotterdam. Uh, there's a lot of globalization. But ever since 2020 and what happened then, and also with the uh, situation between Russia and Ukraine in 2022. Uh, things have changed completely. Uh, the global south is challenging this globalization uh, scenario. And I'm not saying there's going to be a major war, but we are seeing a lot of wars uh, evolving and uh, coming up. There is a danger of a major war. But what I think is really important is that uh, it's not going to be uh, the golden era of globalization that we had from 1991, from 2020. And that's why I, I think uh, we're going to continue to see inflation. And that's why uh, we're going to look at uh, what one can do as an investor or speculator 
to try to uh, profit uh, from, from this kind of scenario. So it's with that in mind that I've recently partnered with Great Pacific Gold Corp, a junior uh, gold and copper exploration company. Its ticker symbol is FSXLF in the US. And I, I think uh, Great Pacific Gold could be a, a great speculation in the current environment of inflation, wars, and also uh, this nascent uh, bull market, not just in gold and silver, but also in the general commodities. And aside from the uh, war and inflation relationship that we've looked at, uh, I've been warning you and, and people in general since 2019 that I thought there was going to be a, a shift away from paper assets like uh, stocks and bonds and tech into hard assets, real things. And we, we saw that in 2020 to 2022, where commodities uh, led by gold, just like it's being led by gold right now. Gold, of course, just traded at a new all-time high above 2400. Yes, um, I, I think we're going to see a next leg up in this secular bull market in commodities. And uh, a lot of you know that the mining sector has underperformed. And if you look at the uh, HUY uh, versus the S&P 500, it's lower than when the uh, gold uh, price bottomed in late 2015, uh, which is crazy. So the, the miners are providing a, a great opportunity, in my opinion, and Great Pacific Gold Corp could be an even greater opportunity within that sector. And of course, uh, in the current bull market uh, in gold, gold bullion, uh, I think people will still do well holding on to their physical gold and silver. But what the miners do is they, they give people extra leverage. The other uh, point I like to make, uh, if you look at the, the gold miners versus gold, uh, the ratio is at rock bottom levels. <laughs> we haven't seen uh, these levels in like over 50 years. That's another reason why the miners are looking really, really good. And if you think bullion is gone too far for you and you think it's too overvalued, uh, maybe uh, the miners is an option, seeing that they're undervalued. And the other point I would make uh, uh, about the fundamental uh, environment, uh, not just for mining, but for uh, the public out there, the retail uh, and funds, is that a lot of money is still in money market funds. It's been the central banks of the global south, so to speak, like uh, countries like Russia, India, and others that have been buying the gold. So there's still very little interest, retail interest, not just in gold, <laughs> but also in the miners. So we're still in early days, uh, I would say, or just beginning in the first innings. And as you can see here, there's a, a lot of money out there, retail money in the money market funds. We're at record levels. So even with, if we get a sliver of those funds into the mining, mining sector, it could make a huge difference. So why Great Pacific Gold? Why, why is it so special? Well, Great Pacific Gold has acquired choice properties in Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is better known as the land of the giants in the mining world. And with the price of gold, of course, hitting 2400, uh, <laughs> I mean, the other day, uh, the CEO of Newmont Mining, the, the biggest uh, gold mining company in the world, just traveled to Papua New, New Guinea to meet public officials there to cement good relations with the island nation. So aside from being at, in the land of the giants uh, in Papua New Guinea, uh, Great Pacific Gold is a great way of replicating a success story uh, called K92 Mining. Yes, K92 Mining was created right when the gold price bottomed 
in late 2015 by then CEO Brian Slasarchuk, and he bought uh, two million for two million dollars a troubled property from Newmont Mining, and he turned uh, K92 Mining into a two billion dollar company. Its share price went from under one Canadian dollar to ten Canadian dollars, so a ten bagger. And all that was done during a, a bear market in the mining sector. So how is uh, Great Pacific Gold uh, a way to replicate uh, K92 mining? Well, since 2019, Brian Slasurchak, he's gone back to Papua New Guinea and he's acquired three gold assets in the form of Kazar Creek, Arau, and Wild Dog. He has also brought along with him most of his old team uh, to Great Pacific Gold, uh, his old team from K92 Mining. And one of these gold assets that uh, Great Pacific Gold owns, uh, Kazar, is in the same region as K92 Mining. And one of uh, Great Pacific Gold's advisors is actually John Lewins, who also happens to be the current CEO and director of K92 Mining. So Great Pacific Gold is expected to, to get a license in two to three weeks time. Uh, it has no debt and it has 10 million Canadian dollars in cash. Great Pacific Gold uh, market cap is currently around $66 million and the share price is around 78 uh, cents US. So if you apply what one could argue is a conservative comparison with K92 mining. And why conservative? Well, because K92 mining went up 10 times in the bear market in mining. And right now, my feeling is that the bull market is just beginning. Uh, but even, even if the bull market doesn't take off, uh, you have the potential of getting a, a 10 times return on your investment. Uh, so yeah, it's not out of uh, the realms of possibility that you could see uh, the share price go up to $8. I'm not saying it's going to do that next week, but in the next uh, year or two, it's very possible. So if you're looking to exploit the undervaluation of the mining sector, not just against uh, the general stock market, but against bullion, and also exploit the leverage of the mining sector uh, and the coming bull market in commodities, uh, I think uh, Great Pacific Gold could provide you with a great opportunity. And just before I finish, I like to say that I recommend that you do your own research on the company by clicking on the link uh, in the description and reading through the company reports. Again, the ticker symbol in the US is FSXLF. And uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good weekend. Take care. Bye.